arrival of Martin Robinson Delaney in Liberia is an era in the history of African emigration, an event doubtless that will long be remembered by hundreds and thousands of Africa's exiled children. Persons from all parts of the country came to see these great men. Ridiculed and ignored in America for speaking, embraced by thousands here for speaking. How strange. The regeneration of the African race can only be affected by its own efforts, the efforts of its own self and whatever aid may come from other sources. And it must, in this venture, succeed as God leads the movement and his hand guides the way. Face thine accusers, scorn the rack and rod. If thou hast truth to utter, speak and leave the rest to God. Saturday, July 10th, 1859. I landed on the beach at Grand Cape Mount, Robertsport, amid the joyous acclamations of the numerous natives who stood along the beautiful shore. Just north is the homeland of Shango, Delaney's grandfather, the Mandinko chief. Grandma Gracie Peace told the Delaney children how Shango was captured and shipped to America. A whipper tried to whip Shango in order to, as Delaney said, Leave him completely broken, as humble as a dog, as spiritless as a kitten. Shango was killed in a fierce fight with the other man. But Mandinko tribes always have a griot, or story rememberer, to pass on their story. Grandma Gracie passed on this story to Martin. Observing the countryside, Delaney wrote he wondered why the coffee bean farmers did not plant their trees further, say 20 feet apart. Wednesday, July 13th. Arriving at Monrovia. At Monrovia's missionary schools, the classes are being rigidly prosecuted. The missionaries seem to be doing good work. There being many earnest and faithful laborers among them, of both sexes, black and white, and many native teachers. They are shrewd, intelligent, 
and industrious with a high conception of the Supreme Being As soon as you can convince them that there is a mediator in Jesus Christ to whom you may talk but cannot see, you make Christians of them. Many young people flee violence at home in favor of the peace-loving individuality of being a Christian. Leaders met with me. Several able speeches were made. The objects of my mission and policy were approved by the missionaries, and I shall never forget the profound sensation produced at that memorable council and one of the most happy hours of my life when the honored old judge and sage, sanctioning my adventure, declared that rather than it should fail, he would join it himself, and with emotion rose to his feet. The effect was inexpressible, each person being as motionless as a statue. With these gentlemen of Liberia, I can make common cause, a noble band of brothers. The fundamental principle of every nation is self-reliance, with the ability to create their own ways and means, Without this, there's no capacity for self-government. War was fast on its way in the United States. King Cotton in the slave South could be defeated, first with a blockade by warships set up by England and the United States, and secondly, if cotton farmers in Egba in West Africa united and worked hard, they could, as free men, supply England's voracious cotton mills, where so much of the world's linen was made. A new day would be born, and our brothers in America would come to resettle, not in Liberia, the brainchild of white slavers of the American Colonization Society, such as Bushwood Washington, but instead in Egba, under the laws of the Egba chieftains joining the cotton farmers, becoming then the world capital of the free kingdom of cotton. Jamaican-born Robert Campbell, a partner with Delaney in this enterprise, wrote, There is certainly no more industrious people anywhere and I challenge all the world besides to produce a people more so or capable of as much endurance. Those who believe, among other foolish things, that the Negro is accustomed lazily to spend his time basking in the sunshine like black snakes or alligators should go and see the people they malign. The cotton plant abounds throughout the entire country, the natives cultivating it for the manufacture of cloths for their own consumption. Its exportation is therefore capable of indefinite extension. England's presence in Yoruba was usually strong and stabilizing, but just as Delaney and his team were heading for Abiyakuta, he read in the August 13th issue of the West African Herald, King Dahomey is about to make 
the great custom in honor of the late King Gezo. Determined to surpass all former monarchs, a great pit has been dug which is to contain human blood enough to float a canoe. Two thousand persons will be sacrificed on this occasion. The king has sent his army to make some excursions at the expense of some weaker tribes. The younger people will be sold into slavery. The older persons will be killed at the Grand Costa. Whole villages are taken. For Dahomey's 5,000 celibate, enslaved, machine-like Amazonian warriors, a Biakuta was an object of their frenzied hatred because Abiyakuta defeated them in a war and even captured a general and made off with the sacred umbrella of the late King Gezo. King Gezo died, some believe, because he defied a prophecy that if he invaded Abiyakuta, a safe city against slavers, he would pay the price. He tried, he was defeated, and he died in 1858. Farewell, farewell, my loving friends, farewell. The jasmine smells of Africa are tonight less fragrant than my scented memory of soft, honey-suckled summer's night breezes in Virginia long ago, and waking to the mockingbird. On the evening of August 5th, I left Monrovia in the bark Mendy, took fever. I regularly took a dessert spoonful of a solution of the sulfate of quinea three times a day, stopping at Junk, Little Bassa, Grand Bassa, St. John's River, Sinu, 
arriving at Cape Palmas, Sabbath noon, August 20th. Being made dizzy by the miasma, the air being freighted with fragrance from the flowers and aroma of the exuberant, rich, rank growth and vegetable matter, I encountered many persons laden with tons of beeswax carried on their heads. Bees are seen ever busy on every blossom, gathering in their store, leaving laden with the rich delicacies of the blooming flowers.